recently did a video having a look at the best-selling gaming system on Amazon, and it was okay, uh, but it immediately made me think, I wonder if Newegg's is any better. So I bought one, and here it is. And of course, it is an ABS system, which is Newegg's like in-house gaming pre-built brand. So let's check out the crap that all of you've been buying. But before that, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is the number one spot for skills in the sharing thereof. Skillshare makes it easy for you to learn various topics like animation, illustration, photography, business, and writing. A specific course I would highly recommend is Style Your Space, Creative Tips and Techniques for Interior Design by Emily Henderson. Considering that we recently moved into a new office, this was a great way to learn some tricks on how to spruce the place up a bit. If this sounds good to you and you have some extra time to learn some skills while hiding indoors from the heat dome, check out Skillshare with its thousands of inspiring courses. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Assembled in the USA, what does that mean that it's gonna break down every 7,000 kilometers? Okay, so they've got a customer care number printed right on the box, it's pretty cool. Oh, it comes with a Gamdia's mechanical keyboard and mouse set. That is pretty surprising, I'm excited to try these out. And then we've got a little baggie of useful stuff. Got a pretty good quick start guide. In the front, in relatively standard deep cool fashion, we have a solid tempered bit of glass with three fans behind it and some ventilation effect on the sides. The front IO isn't great. There's only one USB 3 and no type C ports, but we do have a bunch of radiator support in the top. And then around the back, we have a rear IO that would have been disappointing back in 2013. This case has one of those glass mounting methods that mean you kind of have to soil the entire pane of glass to get it off. There we go. Look at how tiny it is. They chose like the smallest MATX motherboard with like a tiny 2060 in a pretty big case. It looks so ridiculous. The next thing that stands out to me is that thermal tech cooler, which looks suspiciously like a golden field terrible orb, which as its name suggests, was a pretty terrible cooler. So let's jump to the future after the testing, take that cooler off and have a closer look at it. Let's have a look at what's going on under that cooler. Not meaning to spoil anything later on, but I'm really hoping there's a thermal-based application issue under there. Although I wouldn't bet on it. Okay, maybe that'll give us easier access. Okay. Oh, I've seen this mounting method before. I really hate it. Hmm, I guess the thermal paste application isn't a complete disaster. Okay, this cooler is pretty much just a golden field terrible orb with like a different bit of crap plastic glued on the front. And if that golden field terrible orb cooler's performance is anything to go by, this system's gonna run hotter than even the wildest hot tub stream. But anyway, aside from the industry standard CPU cooler equivalent of a weak fart on a forest fire, this is about a $1,200 system. And for that, you're getting an i7-10700F, which is an eight core, 16 thread CPU, and you get 16 gigs of RAM in dual channel, hell yeah. Next up, you get a 512 gig Intel 660p NVMe SSD and an RTX 2060. Power supply wise in this one, we have an EVGA 600GD, which is a 600 watt, 80 plus gold rated power supply. In terms of cable management, it's perfectly serviceable. Although I will say that it's quite an interesting technique that they used here. They, they route all the cables in ways that I've, I've not really seen before. Okay, with that, let's get to the fun part. Let's fire it up and see what kind of venereal disease we're working with. Oh, mouse pad. Just the smallest mouse pad ever. So if you're like a flick king, this, this isn't gonna work for you. Here we have the super generic budget gaming mouse. And look, it's a mechanical e-waste keyboard. 
not a very good one, but a mechanical keyboard. Wow, you know that it's a PC built by purely practical people when the background's just flat gray. But other than the I have no strong feelings one way or the other background, this is a pretty standard Windows launch. Uh, you have RGB Fusion installed as standard, which um, I guess technically isn't venereal bloatware, but I, I count RGB software as venereal bloatware. Other than that though, there's a an abs shortcut, which just seems to be advertising for a better version of the system than I bought, which, I don't know, feels a bit rude. Whoa, there's nothing else on here. There's like no bloatware other than Windows on this system, which, good job, abs. That's that's very impressive. Although I, I do really miss McAfee. Um, but anyway, with that, let's see what kind of gaming experience we get. Okay, this is getting kind of ridiculous. I've been trying to get like an extended gaming session in to just see how the system behaves. And in about 20 minutes, we've had four hard crashes straight to the desktop with Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 is relatively prone to hard crashes, but this is this is on another level. Uh, the temperatures are also crazy. Um, I'll put some footage over here now. So like in the menus, it hits above 96 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And after about two to three minutes of gaming, both the graphics card and the CPU are well over 80 degrees Celsius. So I'm not sure if the hard crashes are temperature related or not, but there's, there's definitely something weird going on. So I'm gonna try a different game, see what happens, and then yeah, we'll take it from there. Now in terms of stability, let me quickly run you through the problems that I had after those first four hard crashes. After that, I thought maybe it had something to do with the NVIDIA GeForce Experience screen capture thing. Uh, so I played without that, it's still hard crashed to the desktop. After that, I DDU wiped the drivers, had a fresh driver installed on the system, and well, it, it would still crash. So in a total of about 30 to 40 minutes of trying to play Battlefield 5 on the system, it crashed about seven times, which is quite, it's quite a lot. After that, I moved over to GTA 5, where in about a 50 minute session of gaming, it hard crashed to the desktop once. Um, after that, I moved over to Fortnite, where in a half an hour session, it was like a single Battle Royale run, uh, it didn't crash once. Although bear in mind with GTA 5, it took about 35 minutes for the crash to happen. Uh, next up, I moved over to Escape from Tarkov, which in an hour and a half gaming session crashed to the desktop once. Again, bear in mind, crashing to the desktop is pretty much a feature of Escape from Tarkov at this point, so yeah, I, I don't know how much that really means in terms of actual system stability. However, considering the fact that I haven't yet been able to specifically identify what's been causing the crashes, we can give it the benefit of the doubt and put it down to like software demonic possession or whatever. Other than that, the gaming temperatures were pretty wild. The graphics card does that very fun OEM pre-built thing of sitting at like 83 degrees Celsius it doesn't quite reduce its boost frequency yet due to temperature, but it's it's just right on that line. And like I mentioned earlier, the CPU is playing jump rope with mid to high 80s and low 90s. That's like OEM Intel crap cooler level hot. Although it was a bit quieter than those coolers, which may just be due to the fact that the fan on the cooler can't spin fast enough to conjure up a banshee howl. In terms of gaming frame rate, it was fine, although I was kind of expecting slightly higher frame rates considering we were gaming at 1080p with an RTX 2060. But anyway, long story short, if you already have one of these or you're looking to buy one, I would probably factor in getting a better CPU cooler. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, and it should be pretty straightforward to install it on there. Let me know if you want me to do a follow-up video where I fix up this system. And then finally, in terms of the Windows activation thing, uh, I made a YouTube story talking about how the Windows wasn't activated on it. And then somebody who had bought an ABS system before said that they don't activate Windows on any of the systems. You have to contact support and then they give you like a command prompt command to put in and then it gives you your key. It's a bit weird, I've never seen that before. Other than those things though, the system is fine, I guess. Although it doesn't really have many advantages over like an OEM hotbox, it's just an SI hotbox. Uh, the only real advantages that it has over like a Dell or an HP system is that the parts are all custom, so you can upgrade them more easily. Oh, it also has much less bloatware on it than an OEM system, but 
then it still has the soul of Elma in it, which kind of makes me think it's not because of the bloatware. But that brings me to the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.